break here, um, and you ended it on a high note, probably exactly what you wanted to do. How are you feeling right now? Really good, really good. Yeah, I, I think that's the best way you can go into a nice long break. Uh, a lot of players found themselves on the score sheet, and and that's always exciting. I thought we had two really compelling wins over a, a league opponent, which is important. Six big points that we needed got us back to 500, um, and now we have a nice long break from a coaching standpoint. I, I like it because we can uh, we can practice a lot of things, we can get better, um, and focus on ourselves quite a bit over the next month or so, um, and be ready to get back into it. We have a a really big four weekend stretch once we come out of this break, so uh, we feel good, and I think our players are going to enjoy this this break from from games in a lot of ways to focus on just a little time away from the rink, uh, focus a little bit more on school at times, make sure everything's buttoned up, uh, like I said, for that final push at the end of the semester. And just confidence wise, I, I, your schedule is so difficult to start out and then and then you got that real confidence booster there. I mean, just to get back to 500, the does that this back, like validate something for you guys? Absolutely. Uh, I think we have a very good team. And as you mentioned, we had a very grueling start to the schedule. And, and we knew that. We know that with our league. Um, we did have some non-conference opponents set up for our schedule this year that um, – just didn't work out. One was Robert Morris. We were supposed to open with them. They folded their program. We were supposed to play Mercyhurst this upcoming weekend due to COVID budgeting things. They weren't able to travel. So you take <laughs> take those two weekends out and and yeah, we, we faced uh, quite the juggernaut of uh, league opponents. And, you know, I think what we learned from those four weekends is is we are a really good team. Um, it's early in the year, so we're going to make mistakes just like everybody else. And um, I think we're just going to continue to get better. We have all the elements that we need, great goaltending, great defending, great offense. Um, and so it, it just takes some time to get it all working at the same time. So I'm looking forward to, to this little break and also to getting back at it uh, afterwards. I understand you got some players with some international opportunities. Yes. So we were always going to have uh, at least a weekend or two off. Um, it's traditionally a four nations break in November that our league always um, tries to take off. But this year it's now the Olympic qualifier break, as Matt has dubbed it. Um, we have Emma Soderberg, who, who left for Sweden today. Um, her national team is competing to get into the Olympics this year. Um, and Nina Job smith who's right next to me, you'll hear more from her. She's heading to Germany um, on Sunday to try to get Germany into this year's Olympics. So an amazing opportunity for both these athletes as well as some other alums. Um, and we hope the best for those, those teams that they can get in. It's clearly a lifelong dream to play in the Olympics. So a lot is riding on. Uh, the next couple of weeks for these guys. What does that mean for the program to have so many of your athletes be able to have opportunities like this? Yeah, UMD women's hockey is built on that. Uh, from the very beginning, we've had international players choose UMD, star for UMD, and then star on their national teams or vice versa, starring on their national teams and then coming here. Um, and there's a proud tradition here of that. And I'm happy that we're continuing that tradition. It, uh, I think we attract really high level hockey players because of that. Um, we have players here that want to be on their Olympic teams and, and that's what we want to help develop them for. So it's really good. It's kind of a perk to still have them be play, <clears throat> playing hockey, excuse me, during these long breaks like this. Yeah, it is. It is. I think, uh, you know, the only tough part for us is the jet lag. And when they come back, just trying to get them geared up to be back here. But generally, when they come back, they take a day or two of rest. And then they're really excited to be back with the group, back with their teammates and getting back into their routine. And hopefully this time they're they're coming back knowing that they're uh, heading to the Olympics. You yourself have been involved in USA hockey yep. um, quite a bit. Give them any advice about how different the international game is or, or what they could expect on that ice? If they ask, you know, the, the big ice, sometimes they're over there, they're playing on big ice. If they're playing in North America, they're playing on small ice. It's more, you know, the, um, you know, how to make teams. 
I think that's where we help them develop, you know, what they need to be doing on a daily basis here in order to put them in the best position to make those teams when they go. Um, we have uh, myself and Laura Schuler, who Schuler has been the Olympic coach for Canada. So in terms of picking teams, what it takes to make it, maybe the last couple cuts, what coaches are looking for. Um, I also think, you know, we want players who go and then go again and again and again and have really long careers. And that's something I think we're pretty good at, too, in terms of giving them advice and things like that. Heading into this weekend, the scoring has come from official suspects, basically, but we had some the younger players get out the board, too. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, Gabby Krause got her first goal on Sunday and the place erupted. I, I said to Gabby, did you have a lot of fans in the building? She said it was really the UMD Bulldog families. And I thought that was just amazing. Just, you know, she's only been with us for about a month, but uh, our, our families are awesome and huge supporters because the place erupted. It was awesome uh, when she got announced. And, you know, Kylie Hanley went out last January with a torn ACL, comes back, finding her way, scores her first goal off of an injury. And that's a really big one for anyone that's that's missed a significant amount of time is coming back from an injury. And find in the back of the net. So hopefully those guys just keep rolling. And uh, yeah, we, we love seeing the secondary scoring. I think that's really important in our scoring depth that we want to have this year. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's tough anytime coming off the bench, jumping into a game, regardless of how many shots you face. And sometimes when, when you only face a couple, uh, that can be harder too. And uh, I think Sodes and Jojo did such a great job of, staying focused, staying locked in, making the saves when they needed to. JoJo didn't give up any rebounds in the shots that she faced. That's something I care about as a coach. We want to be sticky and net, not giving up any second chances. And she did a great job of that. So really important for her to be seeing some game time, especially if Emma does um, end up on that Swedish Olympic team come February. You know, you're in the worlds of Germany. Now you're doing the Olympic trials with them. Take me through the feelings. How different of a feeling is it this time, maybe compared to the world? I mean, in both ways, there's pressure. I think there's a lot more pressure this time, obviously, with three games determining something you've dreamt of your whole life. So it is different, but I think I should just go into the everything with the same mindset of just focusing on what I can do and what I can contribute to the team. Do you personally feel more confident having some prior, you know, a big international tournament now? You know, on your resume? Yeah, I think that definitely helped with my co confidence overall um, here in the WCHA and then also with the team. I think it's easy for me to calm down a little bit and look look into these qualifiers with a better a better mindset. What does it mean to, to represent the program, the UOB program in this way that gives us an international opportunity? Um, it's amazing. Like Coach mentioned, UMD has been structured off of many people who have played for their national programs. So it's a real honor to play here and know that so many people before me um, have that legacy. And to have so many other people on the team also to get opportunities like this, like Emma Soderberg, uh, what does that mean to you? It's it's really awesome just seeing how, how different we are um, and how we can come together and play together on the same team, but then yet still have our, our, own, our own paths with our national programs. It's really cool. How are you feeling about your game right now? I mean, this is a really important hockey time for you, I guess. How are you feeling going into this? Um, I'm feeling good. Like Coach mentioned, we've had a lot of competition these past four weeks, and I think that's really set me up in good preparation for the Olympic trials. Did you notice the last time that, like, the summer you played with Jimmy? What do you think, like, how do you feel the WCHA level play is comparable to some of these national teams that you play with here elsewhere? Do you feel like it? I would say I think most people would agree that the WCHA is more physical, but something that I notice is that every team really plays their own style and their own structure at Worlds. So it's hard to compare like the entire group of IHF teams to the WCHA because I feel like we play a similar style in the WCHA. Um, but yeah, it, they have. The, Sorry. More yes, for sure. And also playing on that bigger ice, it is it is a bit different. I, I personally enjoy it, but I don't really read too much into the ice size.
Do you think this is gonna help you with this long break to help keep you your mind in hockey and everything during this three week long break from UFD hockey? Yes, I think um, anytime you get like that break, it's different for everyone, but looking into trials, it'll, it'll be a completely different experience and it'll refresh me in my own way for when I come back. And I think I'll be prepared for our games coming up. Well, some of the best advice you've gotten from like Coach Roll and Coach Schuler, who, you know, coached in these tournaments at these international levels before. Yeah, I think we just talk about focusing on what you can control. Um, it's, it's hard going into something like this where there's so many int intangibles like, um, jet lag, for example, food, like literally everything is different, but if you just focus on yourself, that's really all you can do and not let worry get to you. The experience itself, I guess, aside from the hockey, so how, how cool is that? It's, it's amazing. I've been offered so many opportunities with the national program and um, just to continue to travel throughout the world, meet new people and just play against different styles of hockey is amazing. You kind of run through the group for, for Germany there. We were talking you have experienced at least one team at there, Denmark, right? Oh, yes. So we've faced them twice in the past world. We faced one, them once in an exhibition and then in round robin, and we beat them both times. So they're definitely going to be a big, big competitor. They're a well-coached team, so we have to look out for them for sure. What are some of the challenges Thomas and Sweet are at the face in their group and then another former Bulldog, uh, Henry Rizzo in the Czechs? Yeah. Um, you saw, did you guys play? You played the Czechs at Worlds, right? Yes, okay. they're also a very well well coached team. Um, it'll be a challenge anywhere, really. Um, go, trying to go for that first place seed in your trials, you're going to probably have to go three and zero. So it'll be a challenge anywhere, and I have no doubt so this is going to perform. Is it just three? Is this a little? You mentioned the pressure. There's what well, you're just going to play three games at that size. Yeah. Your, your Olympic fate, how much pressure does that put out compared to the way you got some more cracks at it? Yeah, um, it is a lot of pressure. I'm just trying to focus on what I can, can do, what I can do. I know it is a lot because something you've dreamt of your entire life is coming down to literally three games. But the more pressure you put on yourself and the more you get in your head, the harder it's going to be. So I just have to focus on, on what I can control. Does it remind you of some of the pressure like you faced last year as a freshman in the postseason here? At UMD, I was gonna say they didn't even get the three game series. No, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't get the three game yeah, series. The pros, all, I mean, the NCAA tournament probably it, the it was all, the Northeastern yes. feeling. Yeah, it was yeah. All, one, all one and done for you. Yeah. One Def and done is way more pressure filled the three game, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely will prepare me or has prepared me. Um, the Frozen Four was a lot of pressure, and I think working through that and bringing what I learned from that and taking it to the qualifiers will definitely help.